Hello everyone, welcome to the video on residuals. We are starting chapter seven in our textbook. So we're gonna begin with the idea that you've already studied and are comfortable with line of best fit. So here's our scatter plot. It's fairly strong, maybe moderate. I mean, it's a positive direction. If I do a line of best fit, maybe it looks something like that. All right, so roughly half the points are above it, half the points are below it, kind of splits the middle. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to use that idea to talk about residuals. So the correlation of this one we looked at was 0.83. That would be considered strong linear positive association. Remember that our, our linear model, our line of best fit, is going to be used for estimates. It's never going to be exact unless your data is perfectly lined up, which doesn't generally happen in the real world. <clears throat> Our actual data doesn't actually fall on the line. It's a model for predicting things, and we understand that our predictions are going to be close, but not exact. So right here, model won't be perfect. Some points will be above the line, some will be below it. Um, the estimate made from a model is the predicted value, and we write that as y hat is what that's called. And so y being the actual y value and y hat being the predicted y value, when you subtract those two, that is your residual. So if you look at it visually, so this point right here, that's an actual data value. But if you were to plug in the x value for that and calculate it using your line of best fit, you would land on the line, of course. And that difference right there between the actual y value, which looks like, if I go straight over here, it's somewhere around, let's say, I don't know, maybe that's 22. And the predicted y value, right, come over here, that looks more like a 35. So the difference between those two is going to be considered your residual. So we're going to look at some examples. So I've got some data over here. Make sure I have my settings the way I like them. Okay, so I've got some data over here. I have created a line of best fit using Desmos. I have my equation for line of best fit. And I want us to calculate the residual for the ordered pair 5072. Well, here's the ordered pair 5072. Color that in. And of course, that's the point. Let me move that down just a little bit. So that's the ordered pair 5072. Right. So that's the actual ordered pair. So what it's saying is when x is 50, y is 72. Now, if I use this linear model, my line of best fit, my equations up here, to estimate what we think would happen when x is 50 based upon the linear model, that's going to give us our predicted y. So remember, this is your x, this is your y. Now what we want to do is we want to, for the same x, we want to see what our line predicts for y, y hat the prediction. So we're going to do y hat equals, remember, the linear model is 1.19x. I'm going to do 1.19 times, remember, the x value we're working with is 50. And then the rest of my model is plus 17.04. And that gives me 76.54. Now I want to see if that matches what my picture shows. So if I go to 50 and I go up to where it hits the line, we're talking about this point right here. And of course, the actual value is 50. And if I go over from here, 
that's a little bit more than 76. So that's a reasonable number. So that makes sense. So that's my predicted y. So my predicted y, and this is my actual y value, my predicted y value using the linear, linear model is 76.54. And to calculate your residual, you're going to do 72 minus, so the actual y value minus the predicted y value. And this linear model predicts that's when x is 50, y is 76.54. And so we get negative 4.54. So <clears throat> the actual value is 4.54 below the predicted value. Right, so I'm going to pause this for just a moment, and I want you guys to calculate the residual for 5180. That is, the actual x value and y value is 5180. So when x is 51, the actual y value is 80. I want you to calculate the residual for when x is 51. Calculate the residual for when x is 51. Okay, let's see how you guys did. So I use my equation for the predicted value for y. That's, remember, that's what y hat means, my predicted value for y. 1.19 times x plus 17.04. My x value is 51. I plug it into that equation, my predicted y value, I get 77.73. My residual is the actual y value. So when I when we had 51, the actual y value is 80. This equation, this model predicts y to be 77.73. And you get 2.27. So that's the difference between the actual and the residual. So the, the actual value, this one, was 2.27 above what the model predicts. And you can see that here, that is the difference, the vertical difference, because the y value is the vertical, between the actual and the predicted value is 2.27. So as you can imagine, the points above the model, the line, are going to have a positive residual. And the ones below it are going to have a negative residual. And if you add them up, so this will be a small positive. This was a small positive, positive, positive. This is going to be pretty close to zero. And we had a pretty large negative. Um, what would you estimate that the sum of all your residuals will equal? All right. So the sum of your residuals will always turn out to be zero if the line of best fit is placed properly. 